Welcome back to the third installment of this amazing series that we've got going on, everybody. If you guys haven't noticed yet, uh, we have been recording these uh, sessions and be putting up to YouTube. So if you can, definitely go ahead and uh, take a look at that. I will link the latest video again into the chat. Uh, again, it's great to just kind of go back and see what's going on. Uh, if you guys can give a like and subscribe as well, that always will help push things out to other people so that more people can see that you guys are giving these presentations and that you guys are killing it on these presentations as well. So. Again, this is just another way to drum up opportunity for you guys. So please give it a like and subscribe or even a comment, which is perfect. So that's great. But uh, for this installment, uh, we have Derek uh, talking about 3D coat and hand painting. Uh, Derek is a very accomplished and very well-known character artist, and he's been doing a real job of everything. Uh, he's been probably the forefront of pushing for more character design at CCS, which is great. So please, uh, if you guys can, if you have questions about being a character artist, definitely talk to him. But in the meantime, I'll turn it over to Derek and I'll let him start to have the conversation. So Derek, go ahead. Hi. Okay, so yeah, I'm Derek. And today we're just going to be talking about general stuff about 3D code, which is a program I use a lot for hand painting. And then... After I do this little presentation about what 3D code is and like the ways you can get it, we're gonna just jump right into like a demo. So again, my name is Derek and I do character art here at CCS. Um, I'm a big fan of League of Legends. So I do a lot of hand painted models in that kind of style. So these are some examples of my work. The two on the right are fan skins from other concept artists. Well, the two on the left are fan champions from concept artists that I brought into 3D. And that's what I've been doing for the past few years at CCS. Yeah. And I use 3D Coat for it. Ooh. And so what is 3D Coat? 3D Coat is a multi-purpose 3D program. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's exactly what it is. And the features of 3D Coat are primarily, well, for my case, um, texture painting. It's like substance where you can paint directly on the model um, and you can do it on lit. It also has PBR options for rendering and for materials, stuff like that. Um, 3D coat, you can also UV in it. And I forgot to put on the list here, but you can also retopo. So though, and I, apparently it's pretty good. I haven't really used it for those purposes because I have Maya and that's what I just kind of learned how to use. But I have heard from other people that the retopoing systems in 3D coat are pretty cool. So that's something you can do. Uh, I use an old version of 3D Coat, but I know in the newer versions you can do a bit more. They've, they're adding more and more features. So you can box model in it, and you can also sculpt, do some rudimentary sculpting. I haven't really tested them out because, again, I use an older version, so I don't know how well those work, but that is an option. And another great thing about 3D Coat that really makes it work for hand-painted work is um, the Photoshop compatibility. So what you can do is essentially you can work back and forth between 3D Coat and Photoshop and in tandem. So if you do edits in Photoshop, you can do it. There's a shortcut to open up the file in Photoshop, your texture file. And if you do edits there and save them, it'll immediately transfer over to your model in 3D Coat. So you can work back and forth. Admittedly, I don't really use it too often because um, Photoshop scares me, but uh, it's there and it's helpful. And then there's some other things that are this more pre prevalent in newer versions that I'm not exactly sure of. It has a full, they have a full rundown on their website, so you can always check it out there. And so the ways you can get 3D Code, um, 3D Code is one of the few programs that's on the cheaper side for a 3D program, which is not cheap at all, but it's cheaper. Uh, so you can do a one-time purchase, and that's it's in euros. It's like 300 something dollars. For a one-time purchase, but after you purchase it one time, you get a year, you get a year of free updates before they go into their like 2023 version. But you get updates from until then, and you can do whatever you want with it. You can work commercially with it, do the whole works. Uh, they are now offering student licenses, so all you have to do is sign up and show them your ID, and if they approve it, you can um, sign up for a year, for um, a year of use of 3D Code 
for like one euro. I don't know what the transfer is to US dollars, but it's very cheap. I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if the features are limited. I I used to think they were, but I couldn't find anything about it on the site. So maybe it is the full version for the student license. I'm not sure, but that's always an option for you if you want if you are a student right now, which a lot of you are, and I am still too. Um, so that's always an option. You can do a monthly subscription, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, you know, pay pay per month to use it, and you can do rent to own. So what rent to own is is that you it's, it's essentially a monthly subscription for eleven months. But once your 11 months are done, every payment you did for each month goes into buying the program. So once your 11th month is done, you own the program. It's like you did a one-time purchase. So you have licensing, you can do whatever you want with it, commercial, everything. It's just that you will pay you will pay that entire fee over the course of 11 months. But they also introduced a new thing for their 2022-2021 version called 3D Coat Textura. And it, this is essentially just 3D Coat but only the texturing software. It doesn't come with like the retuffle features, the the extra sculpting, all that jazz. It's just the texturing. So if you really don't have a use for the other stuff and you want to get 3D coat cheaper, that's also an option. And so why do I use 3D coat? The reason why I use it um, is because a lot of the major companies that still do hand painting, because Hand painting is still a thing. It's a little bit more niche, but there are really big companies that do it. So Blizzard and Riot, particularly Riot, I know a lot of the artists there do use 3D coat, which isn't to, which isn't to say that they don't use substance because I <laughs> for hand painting because I do know an artist who works at Riot right now who does do all of his hand painting in substance because that's just what he learned. So that is a possibility. So you don't have to use 3D coat, but I just know a majority of artists would hand paint do use 3D code because of how it works. And another reason why is brush engines were suited for hand painting. If you would know this if you have used substance before, you would know what I'm talking about. Hand painting and substance is kind of a process. It's kind of weird. So the thing with 3D code, another great thing about it is that it's brush engine. It feels very similar to Photoshop. So it, it just feels better suited for hand painting than something like substance again you can still work with substance if you want and you can still make amazing work but that's just the reason why i like to use 3d coat and and the last one is 3d coat is very simple if you other doodads aside putting your model into the program and then just painting it is very straightforward it has layers it has adjustment layers and like it has like overlay multiply all that jazz and if you want to stick with just painting things and like change your brushes super simple not hard at all to get into if you want to do hand painting so that is all for my little rundown what 3d code is so now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to get into a little demo of some hand painting and i'm going to share my process and what i generally do for my projects nowadays it was I like everything it's always a little toss-up like you're always experimenting you're trying new things but after Battle Academia and Nico, this is where I really start to cl like cl clench on my process and be like, yeah, this is how I do things. So here we are. 3D code. Whoa. 20, it, this, mind you, this is 2020. So the newer versions might look very different from this. However, I feel like the basics still apply, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, so first what we're gonna do is like close out whatever. Go into here and to import a model, you go to file, import, model per pixel painting. You see there's a window that pops up. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, probably can't, but it's just like file window. So you go in here, you find your, your model you want to paint on, FBX, OBJ, either works, and then you just choose it. And so what pops up is this little menu where you can kind of do small adjustments to your model before you even start painting. So you can change your texture density. So 2048, you can go all the way to 4096. I generally stick 2048 because it's just like fine. One one thing that I've heard from other artists is that it's fine if you start up start higher with your with your um quality of your textures because you can always bring them back down. But if you start lower and you want to bring them back up, that's always harder to do. So no problem starting at 2048 if your 
wanting to go for 1024 later on. But you can do a bunch of things here, like um, you could triangulate your model, which I personally don't do it right now because uh, I like to have a version of my model that has um, just plain squares because it's similar to look at. And I do like to do tweaks in 3D coat to my model as I work because just some things you don't see until you're actually trying to paint on top of it. And yeah, you can just a bunch of things here. I really don't use any of these except for this and this and you can rename your set and all that jazz, but we're just gonna hit okay. Keep it simple, just keep going. And boom, so today we're gonna be working on a ride into Shogun. Oh boy, this one I did last summer. She, she She's a little jank, but that's fine. So as you can see, the model is in here. And if you are playing and doing unlit, actually, before you even start painting, hit two on your computer. If you're working in 3D code, not sure if they changed that shortcut, it should be the same. If you hit two, it go, you go into unlit mode. And what this does, takes away all the lighting. So as you can see, lighting on, lighting off. Hit four for a wireframe, you see all that jazz. And you can see that I did try and get my model. So she's all triangly. But what I like to do before I start painting, at least what I used to do, and something that you can do, is you can actually go to textures and you can bake occlusion in 3D coat using your low poly. So what this does, it just, it bakes occlude, ambient occlusion into it. So all the deep crevices will get their shadows and you don't have to work on this very, <laughs> this, this silhouette of a model. So you can change it, you can shoot sphere, hemisphere, sphere plus hemisphere. They look different. I can't explain how they do things differently, but I know they look different. So you can just choose one. I'm just gonna choose um, sphere. And you hit okay. And then what it's gonna do is gonna it's gonna bake the occlusion and it's gonna put it on its own layer. And so as you can see, we got some occlusion here. The deep crevices got their little shadows, and you can kind of see her. So um, this is like, this is nice to kind of get a base for how you're gonna how you're gonna paint things because it kind of informs where the shadows are gonna fall, where the light is gonna fall, and you can work on top of it. Personally, I don't do this anymore because I feel like I've reached a point where I don't need these guidelines to go. I just paint straight on top of the model. But this is always here if you want if you want something to look at before you start working. So for my workflow for hand painting things, I work, there's two steps. There's the grayscale, there's the grayscale time, and then there's coloring time. So what I do is I separate all my materials out into their own layers in grayscale. So I'll turn saturation down. And so I would just fill these in. So this would be the skin, but that's not right because this is janky. I think it's because I triangulated it. Well, what should happen is that it should fill the entire object and I would just go in and fill each object on their own. I'm not sure why it's doing this right now. Let me go ahead and re-import. Let me make a different one and see if I can fix it because that's not supposed to happen. But so the reason why I put them on their own layer is that I can free, it means I can freely tweak them whenever I want without them interfering with each other. So we have that, I can make occlusion again. Let's try hemisphere this time and see what happens. Boom. See, it looks different. Ooh, wild. So, if it doesn't work this time, I'd be very mad. All right, cool. It actually worked. So, it filled out the entire thing. And so, I would, I would just title this like hair, like skin. And then we go into the next one, and I'll make this one darker because the hair value wise is going to be darker. Just fill it all out, choose all my hair pieces, and then I'll call this hair. And then do eyes. This one will be called eyes. And I just go through the list and make everything. And then, so since this is just eyes, I'll make eyelashes. Lashes. These will just be black, but eyelashes are black. Yeah, and I'll just work my way through there. And here's something that you might notice is that Raiden Shogun, if you guys have ever played Genshin, Raiden Shogun does have like a collar and a shirt, but I didn't actually model that there. 
whoa, what am I going to do? Well, the great thing with hand painting is that the way hand painting, hand painted textures and, and unlit, unlit rendering works, it really lends itself to low poly modeling. So if there's ever a detail, so if you ever want like, to keep things low and you can see a detail that doesn't really need to be in the geometry, you don't even have to model it in. You can just paint it in. And if you paint it correctly, it should be just as convincing as if it was modeled in. Um, so actually, I'm going to take a quick detour and I'm going to actually show something real quick. Give me a second. What's my art station? So if you look at my latest project, Stella, change windows. So if you look, if you look at her real quick, as you can see, like she's got trim, she's got metal trim, she's got indents in her in her coat, all the all that jazz. But if you notice that, that none of that is modeled in, it's all painted, even the trim. All the trim is painted in, and the only parts of the trim that are modeled in are parts that I knew would a trip would, would add to her silhouette. So you can see here, this part is popping out because I know I knew that would add to her silhouette, so I kept that in there. But all of this is just painted in. Um, her belt is popped out a bit because that would also attribute to it. But if you look at the belt buckles for her legs, those are painted in too because I knew I didn't need I didn't need to model those in, and I want to save Polly's to make this model hyper hyper optimized for what it is. So that is something to keep in mind when you are hand painting. That isn't to say you can't go higher poly and hand paint. You can do whatever you want. But I, what I am saying is that um, if you want to go lower poly, hand painting is a great way to do so because you can you can fake a lot of things with the texturing process and you won't, you, you won't have to worry about it looking weird if you're not planning on lighting it. So, as you, so I'm switching back to my right and Shogun. Change windows. Back to right and Shogun. So if you have things like that that would need to be painted in, I would just make like a new layer. Honestly, I can't I can't really remember what it looks like, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wing it. Um, but like she would have like ooh, turn on symmetry. If you hit if you hit S, hit S and go in here, make sure to turn on symmetry, and then you can see the axis. Symmetry is off. You won't see the axis. You could even turn it off, but I like to keep it on because I am forgetful. Turn it on, and I would just go ahead and hand paint that in. So, yeah. so this would be like her shirt. And I have all of these separated, so I can go into here and I can hide them. So the flower is separate, the metal is separate, the hair is separate, strand is separate. So I can go in here, and if I find hair, and then boom, you just make it go away. And now I can work comfortably and add in that little collar she has. And then she like, goes down. I'm doing this very fast and sloppily, but you can get the point. So I would paint that in. And so I can put it back, boom, all that. So I would go in, block out these internal layers, I call this like shirt. And then this would be like kimono. Good bucket tool. And yeah. So I would go and do that for every piece that needs its own, every material that's separate. Um, and after I do that, I would actually get in and I'd start painting. So here, up here, you can see brushes. And real talk, I only use these, these four brushes. I don't touch any of these. I only use the circle brushes with varying degrees of softness because honestly, that's all you really need. Every now and then I would like, I would adventure out into these, like these speckle brushes, but real talk, really, I, I don't use these really. So now we are going to start painting our base. So I, to make it easier for myself, I'm going to hide the bangs and I'm going to hide her braid. And now she is just a head. And actually, I'm going to hide this too. So now she's just a head. And let me, I forgot to plug in my tablet this entire time because yes, I actually do use a tablet when I'm painting because painting with the mouse kind of sucks. Although I will admit I do it sometimes because I'm lazy. 
but as you can see with the occlusion layer added on here it really helps inform you where these shadows are falling so if you need help with that it, it got your back but if we if we just use this it's very obvious that we only use the baked the baked shadows so you can you do still have to like add your own painting in here but yeah i would just go in and start start painting if so generally the painting controls are as follows change your brushes up here if you hold shift and then you start painting over you can smooth it fair warning um smoothing and at least in this version of 3d code it doesn't absolutely blur it so if you you kind of do have to be mindful of the strokes you're making you have to be purposeful with them because you're not going to be able to buff them all the way so like if i'm blocking color in really fast and i just want to get like shadows on the cheeks shadows on the face shadows on the nose i go gradient make it really big and just light pressure and just dust it in so then dust in here follow the curvature of the cheeks and the fun thing with 3d coat with hand painting is that um if you feel like your shadows are dark make them darker because you cannot rely on outside lighting to do it for you so you have to do it all yourself unless you are planning on doing like a hybrid of like ppr or like hand painted with lighting you you can try to but even then just just try to add them in beforehand you can always you could always go back and like soften them a bit but since a lot of the information is coming from the text only the diffuse or your base color you need to do it yourself so i'll make these really dark and then add some here here and then here so yeah as you can see that's that's a little that's a little much so i'm just gonna go ahead and paint that out a bit because i don't like how dark that is So I got my shadows in along with um, the ambient occlusion. That's what it would look like without it. Um, but I got those in. So now I can start thinking about, okay, why not pushing my highlights or like the planes of the face? So I would go in and I'd push that a bit. Um, I'm not going to work with this anymore because it's kind of hampering me actually. <laughs> because having it without just makes makes it a lot easier for me to visualize where I'm putting things. So I'm just gonna go on my own now. Go here, dust it around. We have a shadow underneath the nose, and then we have the shadow in here. This is like her brow bone and down her nose. Now we just block in these shadows. And you can see the face already is kind of taking shape. And if you're working without the ambient occlusion bake and you can't really see what you're doing, hit four. Oh, brings up the wireframe. So now I can work along with the wireframe. And I can see where I'm putting the features in my topology and work with it as such. So now, now we can see where her lip is. Isn't that neat? So we're just going to go and we do this. The fun thing about painting in 3D is that even even though it is 3D, so it is a little different. Um, a lot of traditional painting techniques still apply. So if you are trying to learn how to paint traditionally or like digitally, like 2D, still helps a lot when, when hand painting because a lot of the rules still work for these here dusting in her, her bottom lip and actually i'm going to go ahead so we don't look at a soulless body i'm just going to go ahead and add some irises and like stuff like that so we're going to go ahead and hide the face and slip the topology that's the middle hide the eyelashes i'm just going to go ahead and Ooh, and my opacity is low. Ah, that, that's annoying thing about, <laughs> at least this version of 3D code, is that sometimes your opacity just 
turns blur for no reason. And I think it's a bi-layer basis. So be sure to check that before you start painting or you're, it's going to be a little annoying. So now we have eyes and I don't like how those look. She needs eyebrows too. Go ahead and give her eyebrows. And this is just a pro tip in character art in general, sculpting, painting, whatever. As fast as possible, get eyebrows in and and like eyelashes. Even if the eyelash is just a dark strip around the eye like this, get those in as fast as possible because having a face without them is very creepy. And it kind of skews how you see your own painting because it's like, she doesn't look right. What's wrong? It's because she doesn't have eyebrows and eyelashes. So like, I'm going to add these in real quick. And even though these look like bad, these look bad, she already looks so much like a face. Take them out. Boom. Horrifying. Ugly. Ugh. Eyebrows on. Still ugly, but better. Actually looks like a person. So whether it's in, you're still blocking out in ZBrush, whether you're painting in 3D coat, do that as soon as possible for your own sake to make yourself feel better about what you're doing. Because I know when you're doing characters, they definitely go through that ugly phase before they start looking good. And giving them eyelashes and eyebrows um, alleviates that just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and paint in eyebrows. And I, this probably doesn't, this, this probably isn't what Arden Shogun's eyebrows actually look like, but I forgot to pull up a reference, so we're just going to work with it. Um, 3D code, you have to set your own hotkeys so you can do that. They tell you how to do it down there, but I have my eraser set to E because that works for me. Um, also, I recommend actually set up, please set up your hotkeys. It's, it's very helpful in streamlining the process and it makes work go by much faster. Boom. <laughs> Raiden Shogun now has very sharp, thick eyelashes, eyebrows. And so now we have the lash. And look, she kind of looks like a face. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm going to call this one Brows. So I'm going to continue on her, on her face paint a little bit. Just keep going and keep rendering things out. So this is under her chin, so we're going to just go ahead and dark. Like blur it out a little bit. Then we can really get into here and just get in there. So... Once I finish doing this, I'm, I take a step back and I look at it and you evaluate, can I go deeper with my, my contrast? And, the answer, and a lot of times the answer is yes. You can always go more contrasty with your base layer. And if it looks weird later on, you can always go back and change it. Give her a nose definition. And honestly, this isn't to say I'm even a good painter <laughs> at like 2D painting. Honestly, I'm actually pretty bad at it. <laughs> it's it's kind of tough. But having having things in 3D and having things set up for you already within space makes it a lot easier. You don't have to like intuit where things should be placed. So this is her nose. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this off so you can get a better look about what we're actually working with here. Go in here, define her under eye, define her, her eyelid. Go a little bigger. And we can do the arcane thing where we give a little eye bag in the corner and then really punch it with the highlight. Just go bright. Just go very bright. And just... Obviously, you do it better than that, but I'm working pretty fast right now. Hmm. 
Yeah. Kind of got something going on. Doesn't look the best. I'm working really fast right now. But that looks pretty okay. Going to go and put in my lights in there now. So I feel like I have a good base for my shadows. So I can go ahead and punch up the brightness of her chin. Of her lips. Just get in here. And then punch in this plane of her face a little bit, just for more depth. Always think about the range of value as you're painting. Like, you, like, from your brightest brights to your darkest darks, think about how far you're going for each of those and work with them accordingly. Because that's how you that's how you really add depth to a face, especially when you don't have lighting to do that for you. So usually the bridge of the nose is pretty bright, and the collarbone at the top is. We can add a little, little boop. You can brighten brighten her forehead up a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and refine these a bit. So, bada bing, bada boom. We got something that vaguely looks like a face. Nice. Something to also keep in mind as you're painting is your hard and soft edges. That's how you get some. That's how you get really satisfying, <laughs> satisfying painting. Is hard and soft edges. So like, this would be, so like this would be a hard and soft edge. So, this shadow gradiates out soft and like if i blend it out like this it looks okay right but if i go in there get like a harder brush and i add in just like and cut that line with with the brighter and i and i buff that out but keep this keep this connection hard like it just adds more it just feels better it just looks nicer and then i can just tweak it from there So keep keep that in mind if you really want some nice crisp painting. So this is a decent base for our face right now. Normally I'd work a bit like would work a bit longer on it, but since this is a demo, I don't want to like linger on it too long. But I'm gonna go ahead and make her under chin just a bit darker. But yeah, that is a good base face. But it could it could be a bit more, you know? So what I'm going to do is go into textures and adjust, and it has adjustments you can do. So it's right as contrast, hue, saturation. These are two I really use. I only really use everything else. It's kind of just there. So right now, I think she looks fine, but I feel like the brights can be brighter and the darks can be darker. So turn on preview, contrast, and we just push that. Kind of looks jank, but this is when we play around with these features, with the brightness as well. And that's where we can really see something. Now, I don't want to be that pingy, so I'm just going to go ahead and loosen up a bit. But look how different that is. And the range of light to dark is much wider, and so you can add more depth to the face that way. And that's the thing I see a lot of people who hand paint for the first time that they really struggle with, is that... They don't go hard enough with their with their values. Always go harder than you think you have to. Just to really bring in that depth to the face because you don't have the light to do that for you. So you have to do it yourself. So I think that's a pretty good balance. I'm gonna say okay to that. And if you want to see how she looks, just turn the hair back on. Like, ooh, look. Might soften up her cheek shadow a bit though. Because Raiden Shogun is, she's very anime, so I don't think she'd have crazy sharp cheekbones and like very defined. So I'm just gonna soften, soften it a bit. Yeah. So that is a decent base. So I would go in, go even darker, and really hit the crevices hard. So this is where, if I turn this back on, you can see it adds a lot to it. But I like to do it myself because I can control more of it. So 
this lip crease in here, just make it really dark. And then I can go on like stuff like her, her nostrils and just punch up the value in there. And I kind of drag it down just a little bit. Mm. I dragged it down a bit too much. Let's go and just yeah, dust that away. Yeah, face. And her eyes look dead. So I'm gonna do that real quick as well. Um, da, 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 da. I, 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 I. I. So basic eye, really easy. Go a bit darker than what you have. Add a and add a strip. <laughs> just add a strip across like like this. And then you can like buff it out. Boom, your eye's done. At least for the whites and then for the iris. Go ahead and do this. And to make it easier, we can also Photoshop thing. Ooh, you can lock transparency so you can't paint out of it. Um, I think 3D code does have masks. I don't know how to use them, so I just don't. But I just lock transparency and I work from there. So if I hide her head again, I can work a bit more freely in here and hide lashes. And so I can just, so we have pupil, dark on top, continue the dark around as a ring. And then, and then bring her eyelashes because she looks crazy. And then we can add like a highlight in there too, um, particularly on the bottom. I feel like I made her her pupil a little too big. Not a fan of that, so I'll go ahead and change that. Touch. That is a very simple way to paint an eye. And then normally I put this on its own layer just so it does not get affected by other business I got going on. But add a little pupil to it, a little shine. Oh, eyeball. So that is what we have for a face. So I'm just going to move on to the next part, and this is adding color. So the next step of my process, after I get my grayscale done, and this isn't, in my eyes, this isn't done. Absolutely not. But I got to keep going. So when you get to a part where you're like, yeah, yeah, that's a vibe, we can go ahead and add color. So what I do, and surely there's an easier way to do this. This is how I do it. I take my original layer and I duplicate it and I change its name to skin color. I lock transparency, open up my bucket tool over here, and I change it to hard light. And from there, as you can see, hard light just blows everything out. From there, I choose a color that I want to use. And this is just a little bit of trial and error just to see how hard light interacts with my bottom layer. But as you can see, it adds color to it. That is a hideous skin tone, so we're not gonna use it. Try something else. That's a little bit better. Maybe a bit more saturated, a bit brighter. Like, yeah, that looks like skin. If you want to go and change it and see more of it, like as it changes, go to textures, adjustment, you go preview, and you can just go ahead and change it a bit. And the reason why, I, and you'll see why I like doing this is that it keeps color and it keeps, the values separate so I can tweak both in tandem with each other without worrying about the one missing with the other. And I can find something that I like. So a little bit sat more saturated and boom, we got, we got color for her face. And so now if, if I want to, I can keep this on and I can go back to painting and I can see it slowly come together on its own. And this works great for someone like me because I'm very impatient and I like I like the instant gratification of a oh, job all done. So putting color in, it's just really nice to see like, ooh, it's happening, you know. It's just fun. I can go ahead and usually I turn it off though so I can directly color pick from my my values, but Ooh, face. 
something that I've been working with and he, something that I've actually been playing around with is that not only can you just like switch it up a bit whenever you want. So like, if I don't like this color, I can always just change it. Um, something that I have been playing around with is actually just pa painting directly on this color. So you see your lips, lips look dead. Mm -mm, sad. So I will actually go in and choose a lip color in here and just put it on. Just, just put it directly on the skin color layer and see how I feel about it. For some reason, the opacity is at 60. I don't know why, but it is. Yeah, that's ugly, but it's different. And so you can just experiment with directly changing the, the skin layer, skin color layer itself. And you can get some interesting things. If they go a bit more red, highly more saturated, a little brighter. And like, I just dust it in. See, I was using my mouse for that because I'm lazy. Yeah. It's a little ugly, but it, it's, it's lips. It looks like lips, so that's okay. You're ugly, but we still like you. And I honestly think the values could be even more punchy. So I'm going to add more brightness to her face. So this is a very good and easy way to add color to your, to your painting in 3D coat while still making it look semi plausible. But even then, as you can see, like she still looks dead. Like it, it, it does the job. It adds color and it looks okay, but it's not, great if you know what i'm saying so what we do is that we make another layer on top of that and that's when we start painting on top of what we already have so let me just get these lips out of the way because they're they're really bothering me so here is where i'm gonna sh like talk a bit more about once everything once this base stuff is done base color is nice base values are clean this is when I start making layers on top of those and really adding on to it. So first, I'm actually going to go ahead and hide the, hide the bangs again. And since she does have bangs, I'm just going to make everything up here darker. We're not trying to stay too insane here. Everything up here is just going to be darker. And what I mean, how even bring that? Let's bring that down even lower. But yeah, but yeah, here we go. And let's add color to her eyes, actually. So this is that. So I'm going to duplicate all this iris color, even though I know it's not the iris, or maybe it is, who knows, color. And then let's choose, like, I don't know, purple. Bang. And then set that to hard light. Wow, that's dark. All right. So we can go light, <laughs> leave lighter. Bang, purple eyes. And we can we can like go darker in this and then paint it in darker for the pupil itself so it doesn't look weird. Bang. Purple eyes. So um so the whole thing about adding AO and adding darker shadows because the lighting won't do it for you. What I like to do once this all this is all done and said, I make another layer and I call this like painted AO or like extra shadows so that's like multiply and choose a color i don't do don't do just black and gray don't do the scale because it looks drab and boring try different colors you never know what might work i generally like to use like oranges and like purpley reds for this so like that and i would just things that are extra covered up here crevices that can be darker go ahead and make, use this multiplayer and just make them darker Turn off symmetry because her bangs aren't symmetrical. And I just go in and just paint that in. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and paint this line because I know that's where they're going to be. Hide the bangs and just paint in that darker shadow. And so, what this does for a hand painted model that is not going to, that's going to be unlit, you know, it's going to be unlit, is that it just makes everything feel more connected to itself. It, 
doesn't feel like they're just different pieces floating on top of each other. So like that feels a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it feels like the bangs are casting that shadow on top of her head. Obviously I do more tweaking just a bit and I wouldn't make it so harsh. I'd probably like bring it up just a little bit, buff it out. But my general rule of thumb, and this is where you can also be like hard and soft edges. You can make those hard, it makes it a bit more interesting. But like particularly here under the nose, I know there's going to be a pretty hard, a pretty dark shadow there because her nose is there casting it. So you back on. Actually, don't forget to do that. Um, and just paint it on. And so what you get is that you get an even darker shadow, which helps feel helps makes things feel more believable. And also, if you choose a fun little color, it adds more variation to the color of your shadows. So you can see right now, it's just this is a color on top of black and white, which is not interesting at all. And for skin in particular, it makes you look dead because not because people don't have just black and white in their skin. There's blood flowing through it. So when you put light on top of it, that's going to show through. So a really quick, easy thing I like to do is I make another layer. I call this like blush. And if you have like if you have this base set up and it's like, all right, cool, I want to do some more stuff with it. What I like to do is I take this in between color between the darkest shadow and the latest light, take the in between, and then I just saturate the shit out of it. Oh, sorry, cursing. But I would just saturate it a lot. And so it was like, oh, geez, what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm just going to take a very soft brush and this connection right here, I'm just going to lightly paint over it. And actually, I don't like that color. So let's tweak it a little bit. More red. More red? A little brighter. And so we would just, let's, let's hide these again. Braid here. Which one is it? Strand it is. And just paint, dust over it. And what you see it does is that it just brings more life to the face and adds that color variation that was really lacking from the base painting. So this is what I mean that the hard light and the value layer underneath will add, will bring you far. It's little things like this that really make your face feel alive. So I'm just going to dust this around here, dust it on the top here, around the nose. And yeah. And dust it around the eyelids a little bit too, just to bring life to those shadows. And just anywhere I feel I have a shadow, I'm going to dust a little bit of this very bright red on it. And yeah, did you see how more alive that looks? You're going to turn it off. Zombie. Dead. Ew. Kind of a human. But it just really helps a ton bring your character to life. And so... Back to that AO, AO stuff I was talking about. If I take down this dark color and I go here, this around the neck, let's just make it darker. Wrong color, wrong layer. Just, just make it darker. Don't be afraid to make things really dark because you can always just like take it back. And that's and that's pretty much my process. I would go around and I would do this for every single material I have on this character. I do it for her hair. I do it for her clothes. And obviously I wouldn't be painting on blush for her hair or blush for her clothes because they don't have blood flowing through them. But it's the same idea for adding minor color variations just to make your painting feel a bit more interesting and a bit more a bit more visually interesting is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's generally my process for things like this. Um I would usually take it around everything, but it's really bare bones. We have like six minutes left, so I feel like I said enough. So if anybody has any questions, I will be willing to answer them. Uh, thank you, Derek. Uh, again, you guys. Adam, are you there? <laughs> Adam. Yeah, I'm just going to be looking at the little chat, and I'll be answering questions from there. Um, 
Jackson, I'm sorry I didn't see this earlier, but Adam is right. Substance painter, if you're not hand painting, substance is really great for procedural procedural textures. And even then, you can still do a little bit of hand painting in there. If you're use 3D coat's just really great if you're solely hand painting textures. You can also use Photoshop. That's what they used to do back in the day. But that makes things harder. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, cool. Awesome. Uh, so, sorry about that. My mic was really weird. But I just wanted to say thank you again, Derek, for giving this presentation. It was really cool. It was, like, super awesome to watch this stuff. Uh, like Derek said, if you guys have questions, either just unmute yourself or uh, ask them in the chat, and I will vet them uh, for you. So, yeah, just go for it. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I see, Megan, you're asking my polys I shoot for. So here's the thing. I said it before, but since I'm working in a more League of Legends style, League is optimized a lot because the whole allure of that game is that you can play it on a toaster, and it's true. So generally, I for League models, I shoot... They're going a bit higher these days, these days, so I generally shoot between like 9K to 11K at most, generally in that range. Um, and that's... And hand painting allows me to do that because if it's unlit, you don't have to see the extra stuff. <laughs> so you can really you can really cheat a lot of things. Like you know how this shirt isn't actually there; it's just painted on. You don't have to model in the extra. You don't have to model in that. You just paint it on. So um, it's a lot about deciding what you can get away with. Like I like to think of it as you know how if you can use normal maps to fake details and and so you don't have to like invest extra polys into that. It's kind of like that, but instead of being like, I can just do this in normal map, it's, I can just paint that on, and people aren't going to notice, if I paint it correctly, that it's not actually modeled on. Oh, yeah, um, Abby, yeah, you can do whatever you want. This is not just a character painting program. You can do so much more. Um, you can bring in assets, paint them in here. You can paint entire dioramas if you want to. I haven't done it. I'm not sure if that's optimal, but you can. It is. It's very optimal. <laughs> and then, well, Abby asked the question, can you paint anything in uh, 3D coat instead of just characters? So yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. I mostly paint, paint for very much more. For painting in shadows. Um, so for me, for me, I do aim for pretty neutral lighting. Uh, because League models, they kind of walk around all over the place, so you kind of have to, because you're going to see them from the back, see them from the front. But, um, generally, I assume from above, and from the from the front, and from above, from like, from here, going down on the thing. So, I would always put a shadow underneath the chin. Uh, Raiden Shogun was a little tough, because she had some extra bits that just didn't really look right. But, I would assume... Lighting from the front, so lighting from the front, and then I'd put make the shoulders. I'd make th this this part like darker if I was working on like a league model. Um, if I go into, if I switch my thing back to Stella, and I could show an example of this. So back to art station, haha. <laughs> As you can see, her the front of her is typically like brighter. And then the sides of her are always dark. Sides and underneath things are always darker. That's how I choose painting shadows for, for characters. If I go to Batu, you can see even more with him. Like, you can see how dark it gets underneath his arms and on his sides. It's because since League is a top-down-ish game, that would mostly be in shadow. So I just punch it really dark on the sides and stuff. Um, 3D code for texturing higher poly, more realistic character. If you're going for higher poly and more realistic, I mean, yeah. If if it's if you're planning on making it fully hand painted, go for it. If you're looking for like PBR and stuff like that, just use sub. You probably just use substance. But if you want to, there's no there's nothing saying you can't go higher poly with hand painting. It's just that. Hand, the way hand painting works just really lends itself to lower poly. But you can definitely, if you want to hand paint an entire realistic face on a higher poly mesh, you absolutely can. Um, who is Sacred Lotus? I'll just call you Sacred Lotus. Um, I have used the, the the temperature, the clown face. I have played around with that a bit. Um, really, I really don't use it too often. 
but it, it is a thing that you can do and i have played around with a bit and it does add a little bit of extra depth i don't think i have enough of understanding of it quite yet to really get satisfactory results for myself but with a little bit more finagling a little bit more playing around i probably could get it to work oh yeah oh okay you're dagny okay i know that name um trey i i always stay primarily in 3d code i have never brought any of my models into substance because i really didn't have to um but i know people who have and so that's where it comes in where like if you want to do a blend of like pbr and hand painting and you don't want to hand paint in substance what you can do is paint all your textures in 3d coat go into substance and add in like roughness and all that stuff and like mask it out so you can definitely work between them if you really want to Um, 3D Code does do PBR. They're starting to add more of that stuff in, but I don't understand. I don't use the newer versions of 3D Code, so I can't speak on it that much. Sorry. Um, DJ, if you want to go specific style for an existing game, how do you say your art style and translate to your models? Um, I honestly look at them. <laughs> I It's hard to really do an answer with that besides study up, look at them a lot, and just observe as much as possible. Having reference boards is really helpful. If you're um, something that's really nice, like I know for Stella in particular, I was like, okay, I have a character who's wearing has like a really cool leather coat, War and then she has like and she has like folded, just like folds in it. How do they folds? I would look up a character who is as close to what I'm currently doing and see how they did it. So I know for the crotch of her shorts, I was like, how am I gonna paint that that looks believable? I looked up Lee characters who had pants in the same fabric. And so funny enough, they released Arcane Jinx in League, who basically has the exact same pants, but as like actual pants and not a shorts. So I just directly referenced how they painted that and kind of quite could like, in less of, for lack of a better term, stole it. More so referenced it. That's better to say. But um, always look at reference. If there's something similar, if you're trying to do something, that is similar to something they've already done, look for it and reference it heavily because there's nothing wrong with using reference in your work. As long as you're not stealing art, it is fine. Do you have any suggestions for anybody who wants to just start beginning, maybe some tutorials or some things that you kind of started doing yourself? Um, Like, like if you're just starting out like hand painting. Yeah, fresh. No, just like using 3D coat in a, in a way. Did you find anything or any help? Um, I, the buttons, I guess the biggest thing that helped me was Katya Burikina's uh, tutorials on ArtStation Learning. It's her name is honestly I'll probably just link them in the chat. So there's this lady who works at Riot. Her name is Katya. Her full name is Katarina. It's very long and you know, but she does a lot of league models and she, and I'm gonna post her ArtStation in the chat. But she also does a lot of breakdowns for a lot of her models and she even has a full series on art station learning that is free um walking going through the her entire process for painting characters and she she does some things that i don't do because my brain is a little smaller than that and i can't think that think that much but she does a bit more technical things but she yeah she has a full tutorial on how she would do a character and that's i kind of jacked her her process and kind of modified it for myself to make it simpler for myself so if you want to get into it, I recommend looking at her her posts on ArtStation and her tutorials. They're really helpful, and they helped me a lot in finding my own process. So yeah, awesome, Derek. It sounds like that was a very helpful thing, and uh, hopefully you guys learn something during Derek's presentation. Again, thank you, Derek, for giving your little presentation code and how you kind of break down your process. Uh, this? Oh, Adam, you're cutting out again. Ah, uh, why am I cutting out again? Is that bad? Mm -hmm. Damn it. Hold on. Let's give him a sec. Okay, is that better? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think my headset was dying. Uh, but yeah, so thank you again, guys. Uh, it was really good to see everybody here. Uh, just a couple things. If you guys haven't followed Derek on Instagram or Twitter or ArtStation, please go and take a look at that stuff. It was really cool.